I'm Andrew, I'm here in the Polsky Fab Lab in Chicago with Ryan Pierce. The Zcash um, uh, shared computation requires generating something referred to as toxic waste. And I thought, well, what's more toxic than Chernobyl? So I happen to have right here a piece of fabric that has on it um, some graphite dust, and that graphite dust was part of the moderator uh, that was in the core of the reactor. I know people might be thinking, well, wait, shouldn't you not take radioactive substances in an aircraft? As hot as this stuff sounds, it's actually not that radioactive at all. Maybe five times above background. Mm. Uh, this thing right here is a Geiger tube that was actually recovered from within the uh, Chernobyl exclusion zone. It is a Soviet um, SI-22, uh, that's Cyrillic letters, SI-22G. The timing of the pulses uh, is necessary for um, generating random numbers. And so to do that, I need a Geiger counter that also has a microcontroller hooked up to it that I can write code for the microcontroller. I purchased this one from a company called Mighty Ohm. Okay, shameless plug, this was so cute. Join the resistance, mighty ohm. Mm -hmm. For that's an AT Tiny twenty three thirteen. Mm -hmm. for, I mean, this thing is so small, there isn't even room for a bootloader. They have a uh, five 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 timer. I've got my visual aid. A five 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 timer from Adafruit. <laughs> this thing is basically an oscillator, and there's an inductor here, which basically steps it up, and diode which diodes which diode which rectifies it, and a capacitor to charge it up, so that. Uh, 400 volts uh, is going to go through here. Now, the general idea for this uh, is something that uh, I have um, uh, found out about uh, almost two decades ago. Um, John Walker, uh, who is the founder of Autodesk and uh, co-author of AutoCAD, you could actually go to his web server, uh, which is located here, and you could um, uh, request uh, random bits. So you count every four pulses and you compare the time interval between pulse 1 and 2 and the time interval between pulse 3 and 4. And if it's greater, you get a 0. If it's less, you get a 1. Now, let me put some sor a source under it, and it's going a lot faster. And once it uh, collects 64 bytes, it's going to st uh, stop, print out a carriage return, and stop. Uh, we did that so that we would collect 64 bytes, and that's what would trigger the... Um, uh, compute program for Powers of Tau. This is Powers of Tau round 41. This is Andrew and Ryan. Hello. We're about to get in this airplane and uh, generate our random numbers and do our compute round. Let's go. All right. Okay. Uh, the other nice thing about it is if anyone is trying to follow us or if anyone is trying to uh, uh, do any kind of tempest attack or eavesdrop on us, figured being in an airplane, um, it's very hard for somebody to sneak up on us. So we did not see any aircraft trying to tail us, we did not see any drones coming nearby. Uh, so we figure uh, we're constantly moving at about 120 miles an hour, 3,000 feet in the air. It's going to be very hard for an adversary to uh, uh, chase after us and observe uh, uh, the electromagnetic emanations from the uh, laptop. That was it, we're done computing. Yeah. We parked the airplane, and now we're going to go get um, lunch and upload our response file.